Hi, I'm Chas, and you're watching Chas's Crazy Creations. Let's get started. To start this project, I'll be using a cabinet door that I found at Ikea in the clearance area for $5. You could easily use a picture frame for this project as well. Next, I'll be using some folk art stencils. I'm going to flip the cabinet door over to the back side like this and I'm going to place the first stencil onto the back of the cabinet door. For this project, I'll be using Full Barrow Multi-Surface Outdoor and Indoor Paint in white. Using my stencil brush, I'm going to dip it into the paint and then I'm going to offload as much paint as possible. This will prevent the paint from bleeding through underneath the stencil. Once I have it about as empty as I can get it, I'm going to go ahead and start pouncing the paint onto the glass until I can get the look that I want. And I will continue doing this and cut until I cover the entire stencil. And if I need to add more paint, I simply dip it in, offload again, and then continue. Now I'll go ahead and finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like. Now that I've finished painting this, I'm going to carefully remove the stencil. And then I'm going to go ahead and let this dry before moving on. Next, I'm going to flip the cabinet door over and work on this front side. I'm going to place the stencil on top of this side of the glass this time. And for this one, I'm going to be using Folk Art Raw Umber Paint. Now you can use stencil tape if you want to hold your stencil in place or you don't have to. But just like before, I'm going to dip my brush into the paint and then I'm going to offload as much paint as possible to prevent bleeding. Once I have most of it off, then I just go ahead and start tapping it onto the glass. I'm going to go ahead and continue doing this until I have this whole stencil covered. Now, if you want, you can always do more than one coat and it's usually better to do the first round light and then come back and do a second coat because you, again, you don't want bleed through underneath. So I'll go ahead and finish this up and we'll come back and take a look at it. So I'm finishing up and I'm going to let this dry and see if I want a second coat on it. So this one I felt like it needed two coats. So I went ahead and did the first coat, let it dry, and did a second coat. Now I'm gonna carefully lift the stencil. And I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry completely. So while it's drying, let's talk about cure times and if you need to seal this piece or not. So on the back of your paint bottles is usually a cure time especially if you use a paint that is okay for glass, which hopefully you have, and you'll wanna honor those cure times. You can also spray on an acrylic sealer, or you could use a dishwasher safe Mod Podge or something to seal it, but it really depends upon where you're gonna be hanging it. I'll just be letting this cure before I hang it up. I love the way it creates a three-dimensional look by painting one thing on the back side and a different thing on the front side. And again, you could use a picture frame for this project as well. Here it is all finished and I couldn't be more thrilled with how it turned out. Let's go hang it up and take a look at it in our home. I love how this project turned out and I hope this inspires you to try some stenciling of your own. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and my blog. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.